This is from the 201 study, and Tibentafusp has gotten a lot of uh, focus now as its uh, role in ocular mel melanoma has been strengthened with the New England Journal of Medicine publication. This is a bispecific that targets CD3 on T cells and GP100 on uh, <coughs> tumor cells, uh, and it's HLA restricted. Patients with HLA A201 were treated. Um, in contrast with the data presented in the New England Journal, this is for cutaneous melanoma patients. And it was a study looking at single agent tibentafus and then tibentafus with anti PD1, anti CTLA4, and the combination of anti PD1, anti CTLA4. And what this early data shows is the ability for tibentafus to benefit patients with cutaneous melanoma. 37% uh, of patients had shrinkage on therapy. Uh, the combination dose with Durvalima, which is an anti-PDL1, uh, showed a one-year survival of 81%. And that's significant here because this is a heavily pretreated population of patients with melanoma. As we are moving away from anti-PD1 therapy combinations and looking at other types of immunotherapy to benefit our patients who are refractory or resistant, it's important to look at the data being presented at SITSI and bispecifics are having a greater role there. Number one, this shows a <clears throat> ability to dose with anti-PD-1, uh, a benefit for patients, and no new toxicity signals from either drug alone. So, I foresee uh, that these newer immunotherapeutics, which have been in the clinic, being able to be utilized for our patients. And SITSI 2021 has that vibe, this idea of not only exploring uh, other checkpoints, uh, including PD-1, CTLA-4, but newer checkpoints, but also other types of immunotherapy, including bispecifics, and adoptive T cell therapies and how they can interact together to give the best benefit for our patients.